everybody. Welcome to the .NET Conf Student Zone. We are very excited you're here. Welcome to the mobile track. Also going to do some desktop, whatever you're into. Very exciting. I am Maddie Monaquilla. I am a PM on the .NET MAUI team, and I'm here with my wonderful colleague. Hi, I'm Becky Buckler, and I'm also a PM on the .NET team. Really excited to be here with you. Cool. This is going to be great. So it is going to be great. Yeah, I hope all of you were able to take a minute and um, look at the GitHub repo beforehand with all the information about this. If not, give that a quick scroll. There are some setup instructions if you want to code along with us, but other otherwise feel free to just like hang out and watch and you can come back and do it all on your own time later too. So we're going to hop into some slides here. We are going to tell you what .NET MAUI is. And then we were going to start our little workshop. So here we are. Get started building mobile and desktop apps with .NET. Becky, why don't you tell us a little bit about MAUI and then just tell me when you want me to change the slide. <laughs> I would love to tell you a little bit about MAUI. Um, so .NET MAUI uh, is... Um, I mean, you can read it right here. The most productive way to develop native apps that perform great on any device that runs Android, iOS, Mac OS, or Windows from a single code base. Um, so the big idea here is that, you know, you're building apps. You don't want to type the same thing over and over again. Um, so with MAUI, you can work from a single code base and deploy to all four of those platforms. Um, it's super efficient. You know, your time is valuable. You don't want to waste time. And so MAUI is going to do the lifting for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yep, that's the, that's, I love that picture, the single project, single code base, and you can deploy it to those four different um, locations. That's very exciting. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, the next, yeah, you can go to the next one. Um, so lots of people use .NET MAUI. Uh, this is a slide of just some of our customers, uh, like going through and seeing all the little logos there. Um, we have way more than this, but you know, the slide only has so much real estate and we can't cover it with every icon. Um, but, uh, a lot of really, really exciting ones here. Um, so next up. We can go to the next slide. I did. I think. Oh, you did go to the next slide. Thank you. My, my little slide monkey uh, <laughs> is right, right, right in line for the app that we're going to be building today. Um, so .NET MAUI is just one part of a huge ecosystem called .NET. Um, so within .NET, we have so many different tools to help you build the thing that you want to build. So obviously, we are really excited about cross-platform development, and hopefully you are too, and that's why you're here today. But if you're interested in building for cloud, building for web, um, gaming, Internet of Things, .NET has a tool for you, and uh, so you can definitely go check out those on the .NET Learn website and do some investigation on your own there. Cool. Sweet. Click. Click. You want to talk about VS or you want me to? Um, you can talk about VS. Cool. All right. Um, there are multiple ways you can do .NET MAUI development. If you want to be like really fancy and cool, you can use just the command line and your text editor of choice. But um, we definitely suggest using either Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio is our full .NET IDE integrated development environment. So it's got all the tools you could possibly imagine for developing your app. Um, it has a bunch of AI assisted development, which is, of course, all the rage right now. There's remote collaboration. It's kind of like editing like a Word doc or a Google doc at the same time, except it's your code base, which is fun. Um, we have all the hot reload, so you can just change everything while your app is running. You can go in and inspect the UI of your app and find out where in the code it's defined while the app is running just by clicking on it. Very cool. Um, and there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can develop and deploy and debug your app, including like using the, the Android emulators if you want, or directly to a phone if you plug it in, um, simulators. And uh, the Windows subsystem for Android, which we're not going to talk about today, but is really cool. It's a way to actually run Android apps natively on your Windows machine. So big fan of that. And then the other thing is VS Code. We have a new .NET MAUI extension. It's still in preview. We're working on it. But we're really excited to bring MAUI development to VS Code. Um, mobile development has a lot of like moving pieces because especially cross-platform, you have the Android stuff and the iOS stuff and the Windows and the Mac stuff, all these different things. 
So it is um, a challenge to get all of that to play nicely. And we're excited to bring that into VS Code and hopefully make it a lot easier for you to do work there. So again, this is in preview. The biggest difference, in my opinion, which besides Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, is that with VS, we like give you everything right off the bat. Um, there's like no question you click a checkbox and it sets everything up for you and you're off to the races. VS code is definitely more of a manual setup. You gotta, you know, pull everything in. Um, you have to add more extensions if you want more features that aren't there in the Maui extension. But I also know that when I was a student, VS code was actually brand new. So that's how old <laughs> I am. <laughs> but, um, for, People who are like newer to coding and especially new to .NET, you're probably more familiar with VS Code anyways. So I if you're comfortable with it, I say go for it. I love using VS Code. So This, this was me last year, right out yeah. of grad school. I was like, oh yeah, VS Code. And then they're like, oh, VS. And I'm like, yeah, VS Code. So <laughs> yeah, they're different. They are different. <laughs> mix up. Like Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Code are different things. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we named them almost the same thing, but we did. So of our pay grade. <laughs> cool. So we are going to hop into, um, we're going to let Becky go over like what a Maui app is and what it looks like in code. So please follow along um, either on your machine or just watching the video. There are links here to a bunch of different Maui resources. We'll put it up at the end. Again, the most important one here is the first one. This way. Whoa. Uh, dot net or aka.ms slash netconf23 slash student repo. And if you go into the mobile track, there's a readme in that folder. The start and the end um, of the code we're actually going to show today and some setup instructions and all that amazing stuff. Also links to these slides and the recording of this talk if you want to watch it back or watch it on fast or slow. Um, and so then... Yeah, Becky, I'm, I'm going to let you take over. This is part of a whole workshop that can take six to eight hours or longer if you're really slow like me, and that's fine. Um, and it goes through a lot of steps, lots of parts, um, but you will learn so much about how to use .NET MAUI and all the different things that you can do with .NET MAUI. Maddie and I we are going to just give you a little bite-sized version of this workshop. We're going to get you started today, um, a little appetizer version of the monkey finder. But by the end of it, you will have a little application that finds monkeys, and that app can work on your Windows machine, okay, which is where I am right now. It could work on your iPhone if you have one. I do not. That's okay. Okay. It can work on my Android device, or if I'm emulating, I could emulate those, um, or your, your Mac desktop. Um, it will work on all four of those. And again, you only need to write from a single code base. It's just one project, and you shoot it off into all four of those locations. So we got a little got little buttons here. We got the monkeys. Um, and I am going to pass it back to Maddie so she can go through the solution explorer over here. Very cool. All right. We will flip back to my screen on the stream, please. Yay. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> um, this is the app we are starting with today. This is the start folder, the start project, if you will. I'm in Visual Studio Windows right now. I also have VS Mac up, so I will, I mean, excuse me, VS Code, Visual Studio Code up, so I will show you both as we roll. Um, but I wanted to use VS Windows to show you uh, a little bit about how a MAUI app is laid out, particularly get you familiar with this, which is the start um, of this workshop we're doing right now. So what we give you is this pretty blank app called Monkey Finder, very cute. Um, and it has a whole bunch of things. The coolest thing about Maui, in my opinion, is that we can share all of our resources for all the different platforms. And resources means a lot of things. It means things like images and fonts. It also means like the app icon, the splash screen. So what actually shows in like the taskbar on the home screen, um, what shows up while the app is loading, and then any other type of assets you need. If you've ever done mobile development before, particularly like Android mobile development, you know that you have to have like eight different versions of an image and eight different resolutions to cover all the Android devices. With Maui, you can just put in one SVG or PNG file and call it a day and everything is great. So um, that's probably my favorite part of Maui. There's a whole bunch of different things, but 
The way that you write user interface, your UI in MAUI is with XAML by default. You can use C Sharp entirely. For this workshop today, we're going to use XAML. It feels a lot like HTML if you come from a web background, um, but it's XAML. And that was kind of what folks use traditionally with Windows apps. So that's why MAUI does that because it's .NET. And uh, if you do want to use .NET, um, C Sharp or even Razor, which is another way to write web apps. You can do that with Maui. We're not going to cover it today, but it's an option. And I thought I'd call it out. Um, and the way that XAML works basically is you open a tag, you tell it what you want to put in. Anything that with a star next to it, by the way, is from something called IntelliCode, which automatically recommends the thing that everyone uses the most in this situation. So most pages are a grid. Shocker. Um, yeah, so you just open your tag. We could make a grid. I add like my property. So for example, if I wanted to give my grid a background color, right? And then I close my grid. And that is XAML, nothing too fancy. And then you just nest things in here. So for example, here, I would actually want to do this and then reopen and close my grid so that I can actually start putting things in here, right? Just keep indenting until I'm done. Pretty good. So we are going to get started um, actually editing this app. So I'm going to delete this because it's going to get mad at me. And then I'm going to, um, how am I going to do this first? I'm going to show you how to run it here. We're not going to run it here. We're going to run it in VS Code as well. So for Maui in Visual Studio Windows, which is what this still is, if you want to choose where to deploy it, all you have to do is drop down this little play button up here um, and pick where you want to. So I have... For example, my Windows machine by default, but I could also go in and select an Android emulator, um, a local Android device. If I have an iPhone plugged in, there are ways. It's called Hot Restart. If you want to Google it and try and figure it out yourself, there are totally ways to deploy to an iPhone directly. I could also pair to a MacBook. Lots of options. options. That's a lot. You have a lot of options. Very flexible. And um, if you don't see your device on there, you can solve that problem. Yes. Yeah. There are, we have really good docs. Yeah. So I have the link for those, but if you are in VS code, which means that you are either on windows and VS code or on a Mac. Oh, I actually already started running this. So let me stop. Um, this is the extension you need, the .NET MAUI extension, and it will pull in, um, not just this extension, but these other two C sharp and C sharp dev kit. So don't be shocked when those pop up. C Sharp is literally just like the language highlighting for the C Sharp language. It gives you the autocomplete and the fancy coloring and all that stuff. C Sharp Dev Kit um, is actually how we handle solutions in VS Code. That's kind of the most simple way to think about it. A .NET project, everything is based on a solution file. Um, in this case, it's the monkey finder solution. And when you clone this repository, it's got two solutions in it. It's got the start and it's got the finish. So it will pop up with a little notification here. I don't think it'll show it to me anymore. Yeah. It'll pop up one here and it'll say, which solution do you want to use? Just select the start solution from the start folder. It'll pop it. And then it just, it pops it up here. Easy peasy. No big deal. Um, at any point you can change it, I believe, by using open solution. If you just type that in to open this top bar in VS code, control shift P, it's called your command palette. It is lit. So this, I have the full workshop, not just the workshop we're doing today. So I just opened the part one solution, but then it shows up on the left here in your solution explorer. I could also edit everything just like the regular files, but that's kind of cluttery. I like the solution explorer. So we're gonna do it this way. Um, and then once I open a XAML or C sharp file, any of them, I get these magical little squiggly braces in the bottom right here. And if I zoom in here, I have a couple options. One is to set the project. Just ignore that because there's only one project. The other is to set the debug target. And so on this machine, it's a Windows machine. So I only have an Android thing or my Windows local device. Um, on a Mac, if you have Xcode installed, you could do Mac desktop or you could do iOS simulators. And those automatically pop up. So when I highlight over this and I hit debug target, it gives me all of my options. Everything's build only right now because I don't have my Mac connected. But um, if I did, if I was on my Mac and I had Xcode installed, it would give me all this. Did you say auto magically? I did say auto magically. I love that. I'm stealing that 100%. How have I not heard you say that before? I don't know. I, wow. Auto magically. Oh. It's beautiful. <laughs> 
And then to run the app, all you have to do, you don't even have to create a launch JSON file, just hit run and debug. And it will automatically select, if it doesn't for you, you can do it, but it should automatically, automatically, if you will, select the .NET MAUI run configuration. Where is it? Scroll up. It should just say .NET MAUI. Sometimes it pops up here. Sometimes it pops up below um, in the in the thing here. But yeah, just select the .NET MAUI run. At some point, this will change to just be the C-sharp run configuration. But as of right now, it is the .NET MAUI run configuration. So this is uh, where we're starting with this app. Very basic. <laughs> At first, when I was loaded, I was like, did I break it? No. no you didn't break it. But no. honestly, it's still... it's. It's working, okay? it's working, which is yeah. more than what I can say for most of my code when I started off. <laughs> yeah, I get that. So we are going to jump right in and we are going to start um, editing this and adding some UI. So I am going to stop it in VS Code. You are welcome to continue working in VS Code. The reason I am switching back to Visual Studio Windows is because I want to use something called Hot Reload, which will refresh the UI as I write the app. And because the VS Code extension is new and is in preview, we don't have that yet. Hopefully, if you are watching this sometime in 2024, just to go learn Maui, we do have it in VS Code. So you'll be having a great time. But um, right now, I just I want to use VS Windows and I want to pull up my notes, please. Thank you, part one. All right. So anything that I do that's IDE dependent, by the way, I will switch between so you can see both. So I'm letting this run in Windows because I would like to um, use the Windows on my desktop and keep my Android emulator for VS Code. Just a little tip there. And then I'm going to hide this because I don't need to look at this right now. It's popping up. Everything's loading. Um, this is a really cool Windows, Visual Studio for Windows feature called Live Preview, which lets you just see the app all in one screen. I don't have to like keep dragging over the actual window so that you can see it and then move it off my screen or, or switch side to side or whatever. So we're going to use this for now because it just helps with the, the one screen look. Um, and what we're going to do first is just display a list of monkeys. That is the intro to this workshop. It is super basic. We're going to have a good time. Um, and this, again, will all be in the, the readme of the full workshop. It's linked in the students out readme. So you can follow along with this too. So we are going to take a existing JSON file. I'm going to copy the link and I will show it to you in a second once I get it over. Um, and it's from the creator of this workshop, James Montemagno, who's wonderful. And he gave us this wonderful JSON that literally just has a list of monkeys, baboon, where it's from, Asia, Africa, a quick d detail of them, um, an image, and then roughly how many there are and roughly the location of them. And that we would use later for when we want to do. Uh, it is called location. the Monkey Finder app. It is called all. the Monkey Finder app. Yeah. So we are going to go into our models file here. And I'm actually, I'm going to stop this so that I can edit the C sharp without doing anything crazy. Sometimes adding in data while the app is running is not a great idea. Um, and I'm going to go to the monkey.cs file. And this is literally just my C sharp class that tells me what a monkey is, right? What are the properties that make up the monkeys that I want to show in my app? And if you've done any other C-sharp development or even something like Java, any object-oriented programming language, this should feel familiar. The syntax is always a little different between um, different languages, but I just copy-pasted this in. Public means that any anything in the app can get it. String, what's the type it is. Name, and then just get and set. C sharp is very friendly. You don't have to write out like get name equals name, set name equals name, or whatever it is for the language. So um, we are also going to deserialize the monkey JSON that I pulled up from this file here, right? So we need to tell C sharp that this is JSON. It's going to deserialize. So we're going to just add in some nice code here. Copy paste it. It's all in the thing. Um, and all I'm adding is something called a serializable for JSON. If if you want to learn more about it, Google it. If you don't, no big deal. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to make sure this builds because who knows what I screwed up copy pasting. Let it go. 
Nice. And I am using uh, .NET 8 preview right now because .NET 8 ships on the 14th on the official day one of .NET Conf and the student zone is the day before. But tomorrow this will be regular .NET 8. So very exciting. Super um, exciting. And it, I know. I'm sh- it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. It looks like this is building. Okay. So I will continue plugging along. Um, we're going to go into our main page. So in this view folder here, let me zoom in. There are two pages that we gave you, even though they're both empty, main page and details page. Um, in main page, all I have right now is this content page class holding everything. The first thing I want to do is I want to give main page the context of that monkey model we just made. So XML and S, XML namespace model is just what I'm naming it. I'm calling it model. Um, and then I'm giving it monkey finder dot model, which is literally this, the name of this folder just with the dot, right? So done. Going to hit save on that. And then we are going to copy paste. Actually, I'll type this out with you. It'll be fun. Um, we are going to use something called a collection view to show all of this. And a collection view is just a smart list. So it, if it has a ton of data in it, it recycles it. It doesn't try to load like millions of items at once and crash the app. It just waits until you scroll to load those things. Um, and you can also use it for very simple apps, just like we're about to do here. So let's open this. We're going to give it what's called an item source dot items source, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, a source of items for this collection view. And then we're going to feed it an array of monkeys. So I will just copy paste um the the information from the json file we were looking at but first i'm giving this array a type and that type is of the monkey model that we just popped in um right here so this is this model colon monkey is this model and then this monkey.c sharp file that we gave it with the, the name location details and that's basically telling this collection view that the array we're giving it is a monkey with a name, an image, a location, whatever other things we want from that data source, um, and it'll be able to read it. So I'm going to copy paste in some things here because it's easier than trying to type it all out. Oh, but the indenting is horrible. Fun fact, I just looked it up. Um, The group name for a monkey, because you were saying the array of monkeys. I was like, I wonder what it is. It's a troop. A troop. Oh, that's so cute. Hmm. Oh, fun fact. That's actually really funny. <laughs> learn Maui, learn about monkeys, two for one special today. Well, here's our troop of monkeys. This is only three <laughs> from the JSON. It's the baboom um, and then the kapoot. kapoot. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know how to say monkey names. This Words are hard. Yeah. But this is literally just data we're hard coding in. Um, nothing fancy. With part two of the full workshop, which we're not going to get to today, we will show you how to use this fancy JSON thing to pull it in from the internet. But for today, for part one, we're just, we're learning, we're having a good time. And then we are going to put in um, what's called the item template. So we gave our collection view the items source, which tells it where to get the data from. And eventually we will switch that out with something that calls it from the internet. And then we give it the item template, which shows it how to actually display the data, the array we just gave it. So um, same thing, we have to tell the items template, item template, what kind of data it's showing. So same thing we just did before where we do, um, let me close out of that so I can see. Yeah, model monkey, I don't need the squigglies. Model colon monkey and autocomplete already doing it for me. Thank you, autocomplete. Um, close that tag. And like you can see, it's XAML, so it's just a bunch of indents. Um, and then we are going to put in a horizontal stack layout, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is a stack of items laid out horizontally. We're going to give it some padding, 10, close that. And then I'm going to open this. And now I'm actually going to run the app. So hopefully, if all goes well, we can see this come together as we type the XAML in. Give it a second to load. If you want to open that live preview thing that I'm using um, that shows the app inside of Visual Studio, you go to debug windows. Uh, ah, come back. XAML live preview. Um, and if you want to run this app in VS Code, this should be automatically updating magically. 
Yeah, it's got it. Nice. So this is all the code we're typing right now in VS Windows. It's just reading the file from the file system. So it's picking it up totally fine in VS Code. Um, you would do the same thing that we did before. You go to these curly braces down here, select where you want to debug it, um, and then hit either F5 or the little play button with debug on it with the .NET MAUI configuration. Got it? Got it? Good. Okay, let's go back here. So let's make these monkeys show up. So we have our horizontal stack layout. Um, and so the way that a collection view item template works is this is saying for each item in the array, show it as I'm about to describe it. So instead of having to say for each three monkeys, this is how I want each individual monkey to look. I'm going to do it once and it's going to go through every item in the array and pop it up above each other, below each other, whatever. So we want to show the image of the monkey. Um, and we want to give it some settings. So aspect, like the aspect ratio, we want it to fill the amount of space we give it. Hello. Why is that? Are you mad at me? There we go. It's doing aspect. its best. Yeah, it's it's having a hard time. Just like <laughs> me. One, 100, my height. And then we're going to give it a source. And this is where the magic starts to happen. Um, we're going to do something called a binding. And what this is saying is bind to the image property of um, what data you are using in this item template right now. So go into your items source of this collection view, look for anything called image for each item, and then bind to that. So data binding is something we get into in the next part of this like full workshop. But for right now, we'll just we'll just look at this and call it a day. I'm going to close that tag, see if, yay! Oh my gosh, it shows right up. That's very good. Okay, and so you see this image of this monkey pops up. Um, I'm gonna go and I'm actually gonna click in the app on the other side and resize the window a little bit. Yeah, because sometimes that tricks it into refreshing the page so that all the monkeys show up because you can see it was just showing the last one in the list for whatever reason. But um, cool, so now we have the image of our monkeys just like that. And let's keep on plugging away. So we are going to add um, a label in this horizontal stack layout. So what that will do is next to the name and the next to the monkey, we want to say like its name and its location. So check in my notes, start typing label. You can see that um, IntelliCode already starts popping things up for me because it's very nice, but I'm not actually going to use that. We're going to do vertical options equal center, which is how you center the text. And then text color is whatever color you'd like. I'm going to do purple because purple is the best color. I'm going to close that tag, open it up. And then what I'm going to do is something called a formatted string or a multi-binding string, excuse me. Um, and what that's doing is letting me put multiple different pieces of data into one string without having to format it twice, which is very nice. So I'm giving the label the text property, which you would have automatically if I didn't want to do this fancy multi-binding thing. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to do multi-binding string format. Um, and this is similar to if you've seen formatted strings in any other programming language, this will be familiar to you. But if not, um, the quick TLDR of this is basically I'm going to give it two pieces of data. And those two pieces of data are zero and one. And zero is going to show the first piece of data. And one is going to show the second piece of data, just like that. So I'm going to do binding um, path equals. And then right back to where we were with that monkey model. We're going to do the name and the location. Oh, and it's already popping up. System.object. That's not right. Hmm. I wonder what I did wrong here. Location. Close the tag. Yeah, there we go. All I had to do was just uh, finish writing it, and it fixed itself. I didn't realize I was going to do that. So I'll bring this app over so we can look a little bit closer. But all I was is tells you the name, tells you the location, just like that. Um, and again, this is all, all the app is running. I'm typing this. So you can see sometimes it's funky while it tries to figure out what I'm trying to do. Um, but once I finish writing like valid syntax, it works. So the other thing we could do is we could put these strings on top of each other right now. They're next, just next to each other. So we could just delete all of this. Our hard work. Um, inside of this horizontal stack layout, we could create a vertical stack layout, which will show up and down. It's going to be next to it. Um, and then we're going to give it some vertical options to center it. Center. 
if you notice, by the way, I'm just typing like the first two letters of everything and then hitting enter and it just does it for me, which is really nice. Um, autocomplete is amazing. So nice. same deal here. We're going to bind it to the monkey name. Um, I'm going to give it a font size. So it's a good font size. Let's do 24. Let's give it a color of purple. And then let's close that tag. There we go. And then we're going to do under it. The next item in this vertical stack, we're going to do the same thing, except it's binding location, font, oh, font size equals, get a little bit smaller, let's make it 18, and then let's give it a new text color. Let's do, Becky, name a color, go. Mm, red. Love it. Oh, I have to close the tag. <laughs> that would have been so magical. Close. I don't usually type so zoomed in, so it's hard because I, <laughs> I finish. It everything. really is, but I want to make sure everyone can read my text, which I understand. So there we go. Now we have the name, um, the 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 location next to the picture, all laid out beautifully. It's already running. We could do the same thing on Android and iOS. One thing I will show you real quick that I love is if you're going through an app, um, a, a Maui app, and you want to figure out like where or how they define something, you can actually click on the item in this live preview here. Click. And it will take you to not only where in the XAML it's defined, but also where it is in this thing called the live visual tree. So you can see that this has my main page here. Um, with, this is the collection view we're in. And then there's three horizontal stack layouts. One, two, three. For each of the monkeys we created, we hard coded into the XAML file here because Collection View automatically does that. And in each horizontal stack layout is this image, which is where we got the monkey image. And then now we also have the vertical stack layout with the text that we're showing. So that is a quick and dirty intro to .NET MAUI. Again, there is a whole bunch of other parts of this workshop. I'm going to pull this up on my screen right now so you can see it. Um, I will show you the link also in just a second, but there's six parts to this all the way from just displaying this data locally, which is what we just did to displaying it over the internet and using something called MVVM model view view model, um, to do that. It's a, it's an architecture that a lot of people use for Maui apps. And then we talk about how to navigate between pages, how to actually get the location of your phone that you're running this on and then say what the closest monkey is. Um, and then some other cool things with theming and making the collection view more performant and doing some more things it's so a lot. yeah it's a lot yeah mm -hmm. uh there's a lot of really cool stuff in here and would like i would so highly much. recommend taking the time to do it or going through and watching the actual um four hour walkthrough on youtube that our friend james Montemagna recorded so feel free to do that tons of resources here and tons of resources back in my powerpoint which i will play from current slide including Again, the link to the GitHub that we were using for today, which will have not only the basic start and finish projects that we just had, but also links to that full four, four, six, eight hour workshop, whatever you want it to be. Um, the learn page for Maui itself. So you can go through and click through our docs. This is another link to that workshop, the full workshop. And then of course, a link to our learn training path which is a, like a very guided, like you watch the video, you go along with it. It's kind of like a really long version of this, um, exploring some different Maui concepts. So another thing, this is the student zone. So you can go see all of the other amazing student zone talks and repositories that are available to you um, with this first link here. There is a certification now for C Sharp. So if you are totally new to C Sharp entirely and you, you kind of liked what you saw today, you can actually go through and click through this and get a certification that says that you did the intro to C Sharp stuff and, and you kind of know your way around, which is really cool. There's also, of course, the .NET beginner video series, which I would highly recommend if you're just getting started with .NET. Um, and definitely tune in for .NET Conf for the rest of the week. There are three days of sessions and Tuesday or Wednesday through Thursday, it goes through the whole night. So we have people from all over the world sharing. It's crazy. What, yeah, it's amazing, it's right? 24 hour, like, oh, it's wild. It's so cool. And I'll be hosting. <laughs> I should be hosting one of these days. I don't know which day, but I will be. So you'll see. And it'll be again. fun. Yeah, it will be fun. Um, And that's that. Becky, do you have any parting thoughts for our, our friends here? <sighs> Man, I'm just like, I'm excited to see like what people create with this and then like yeah we gave you a little monkey finder app 
But if you go through this workshop, it's going to give you so many skills that you can take to build your own apps. Okay, maybe maybe you're not that interested in finding monkeys and like we won't be offended. It's okay. Um, but like the tools that you learn in this workshop are just like really, really valuable. So um, yeah. definitely excited to see what people make. And if you do make something like post it on social media and like tag us and we'll find it. We'll, we'll give you some high fives. It'll be great. Yeah. We always share these things with our team. Like when we see people building Maui apps. So um, tweet them or X them or threads them or <laughs> mastodon them, toot them. I don't know. There's too many now. Instagram <laughs> them. Instagram them. That's Does Don Ned have an Instagram? They do. Yeah. And Don Ned has a TikTok. And the, so. tic- the TikTok, I think, is more active. You yeah. should TikTok them. Actually, TikTok. that'd be pretty cool. I don't, yeah. You can so, tag people on TikTok. Yeah, but we're also here to answer any questions. Um, you can hit us up. At, these are our, our Twitter slash X handles, but we're the, our names are the same on all social media. You can find us. Also, this is my GitHub handle. Yeah. Um, and feel free to like join in live for any of the .NET Conf sessions and ask your questions in the chat there. We do live Q&A at the end of every session. So um, that's a great way to interact with the team. And definitely, like Becky said, let us know what you build. And if you liked using Maui, how you like using the VS Code extension, how you like using Visual Studio, anything, we're happy to hear. Yeah, we, so. we love hearing from you guys. And like, also, if we don't have something that you want, if you're if you're Jones in for something, let us know. Um, so we want to we want to make Maui awesome for you. Yeah, sweet. So that's it. Thank you for joining and enjoy .NET Conf, everybody. <laughs> Bye.